Hello class, and welcome to today's algebra lesson, which is about exponential functions. By the end of today's lesson, you will be able to graph, solve, and identify exponential functions. So we're going to start with the basic definition of an exponential function, and that is the product of an initial amount and a constant ratio raised to a power. So the most basic version of this equation is y equals a times b to the x power. a cannot be 0. If we're multiplying by 0, that would make everything turn into 0, so the equation would go away. So that doesn't work for us. b has to be greater than 0. We're not going to deal with the negatives for this ratio value. And then b has to be greater than 1. So that ratio that you're changing by has to be something more than 1 because multiplying by 1 is not going to actually change anything. So for example, you might see something like y is equal to 2 times 7 to the x power, or we could see something like y is equal to 2 thirds times 19 to the x power, or we could even see something as simple as 5 to the x power, where that a value, that initial value out front being multiplied, is just 1. The asymptote is a line that this kind of function is going to approach but never touch. So as we solve these problems, we are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller decimals, and they are going to approach one particular line, but they are never going to actually touch this line line. So for a basic example here, this is what an exponential function is going to look like. A few key things that we've got going on here. First, the bottom of any exponential function, or if you flipped it over, the top of any exponential function is going to have this tail feature, which almost looks like a flat line. But essentially what's happening here is we are getting closer and closer and closer to, in this case, the asymptote of 0. So as we're plugging in these smaller and smaller x values, so for example, 2 to the negative 2, this lowest point here, is 0 0.25. When I go to the next one, 2 to the negative 3, that's 0 0.125. And as I would keep going and have these values going in smaller and smaller and smaller, these numbers are approaching something that is getting closer and closer to zero, but never actually touching zero as a value. So these fractions are approaching the asymptote, but we never actually touch it. So this tail is always going to hover just above, or if it's reflected, just below that asymptote. As you continue, that flat line suddenly takes a big spike. In this case, we are spiking up. If it was reflected, it would be spiking down. That's because as we move to the positives, so this highest point up here is 2 to the third power, that was 8. But as I approach 2 to the fourth power, 16, or 2 to the fifth power, 32, we're growing at a quicker and quicker pace, which is what's causing this line or this curve to go up so quickly. So looking at some key features of these functions. The first is our domain. Remember, domain is your x values. A key thing with exponential functions is that the domain, much like all the linear functions and quadratics we've been looking at, is all real numbers. You can plug in any value into this x spot. The range for this function is what starts to be limited. As we are solving this problem, our range is going to depend on this number at the end being added or subtracted. If I look back at this first example, there was nothing being added or subtracted, and that asymptote was right at zero, because there's nothing that exists there. This particular function is going to have a range that asymptote 
is going to exist at negative 9. Because there is a negative in the front, our y values are going to be less than that negative 9. So there would be a flat line at negative 9, and because it's a negative, everything else on the graph is going to fall below that point. One of those points that is going to exist is there's always going to be a y-intercept. So the graph is always going to cra cross the y-axis at some point. In order to figure that out, you would have to plug in 0 into the equation. So in this case, negative 1 half, 8 to the 0 power, minus 9. Remember, anything to the 0 power, so anything that has an exponent of 0, that's going to simplify to 1. So I've got negative 1 half times 1, which is just negative 1 half minus 9. So my y-intercept in this case is going to be 0, negative 9 and a half. And then I already briefly mentioned this, but that asymptote, that line that is being approached, is going to be almost the same thing as the range, but instead of saying our y values are getting smaller because of the negative, the asymptote is saying y is equal to negative 9. This is the line that our exponential function is never actually going to touch. Now I want you to try this one on your own. First, identify the domain of this function. Once again, as I mentioned, domain for all exponential functions is all real numbers. You can plug anything into the equation. Now I want you to go ahead and identify the range. The range for this function is y is greater than 7. It's a positive in the front, so we are going up, and our number in the back is 7, so we are getting bigger than 7. Next, I want you to identify the y-intercept. When you plug in 0 into this problem, 2 thirds to the 0 power is going to give you 1. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 7 gives you a y-intercept of 12. Last, I want you to go ahead and identify the asymptote. So our asymptote is that line that we're never going to touch, which in this case is y is equal to 7. So now we're going to take those key pieces of information and use us or use it to help us graph. So when I am looking at this, I first want to identify my domain. And my domain, once again, is all real numbers. I can plug in any x values into my problem to help get my graph. Once I get those answers, I want to look at what the range would be. In this case, there's nothing being added or subtracted, and I've got a positive in the front, so all of my values should be above 0. When I calculate that y-intercept, I plug in 0 for x, so 1 6 to the 0 power is 1 times 12 gives me 12, so my y-intercept is going to be located at 0, 12, and then I have that asymptote, so that line that I am never going to touch, and in this case that is y equals 0, once again, because there's nothing being added or subtracted in the back. So what I like to do is just draw in that asymptote line, in this case it's y equals 0, aka the x-axis, and my graph is going to have to be entirely above that part. So I'm going to go ahead and create an xy table. I can plug in any numbers, so I'm just going to choose the most basic ones, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. When I plug in negative 2 into this function, I get an answer of 432. When I plug in negative 1, I get an answer of 72. When I plug in 0, as we discussed already, that y-intercept is 12. When I plug in 1, I get an answer of 2. And then when I plug in 2, I get an answer of 0 0.3 repeating, or 1 third. 432 is a little bit high for what we are going to graph, so I'm just going to ignore that top piece as I am graphing the function. So I need to be able to fit 72 on my graph, so I'm going to go ahead and count by tens 
as I go up. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and then 70, 80, 90, and 100 as I am counting up the side of my graph. So then I wanna go ahead and put those points on. So negative one is up at 72, so a little bit above 70. Zero is at 12, so just slightly above 10. One is at two, so just barely above that y, or excuse me, my x-axis, my y equals zero line. And then one third would be even lower than that. Really hard to get into those decimals once we get onto the graph, but the key is that we know we need that flat line part. So I've got that tail, that flat line, which should remain above my asymptote, and then it's gonna curve up in a smooth curve. A little bit difficult to do when I'm using this tablet, um, but you should be able to do that just fine when we get to paper pencil in class. So we've got these four points on our graph with that tail hovering above zero and skyrocketing up as we approach the left side of this particular function. Go ahead and try this one on your own, listing the four key features and then checking your graph. So domain, all real numbers. Because we have a negative, our range is going to be less than zero because we have nothing being added or subtracted. The y-intercept is at negative four, and that asymptote is once again that y, or excuse me, the x-axis at y equals zero. When I plug in my values, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two, here is the chart that I get, which then gives me the graph shown. Another thing I wanna be able to do is to be able to write these exponential functions. So in order to do that, remember our general format of our equation was y is equal to a times b to the x power. We wanna be able to figure out that common ratio, that b value, and in order to do that, we use division. So in order to find b, you pick out any two numbers. I'm gonna go ahead and just pick the first two, 729, and divide that by 2187. When I do that, I get an answer of b is equal to zero point through repeating, aka one third. I could have done the same thing and said b is equal to 81 divided by 243, and I still would have gotten back to that one third value. Your a value, that initial piece, you are going to look at your y intercept. So zero, 2000, 187 in this case. That gives you your A value. So our equation for this particular problem is Y is equal to 2,187 times one-third. I put that in parentheses so that I know I'm multiplying. And then the one-third is to the X power, which is what makes it exponential. So I've got Y is equal to 2,187 times one-third to the X power. Go ahead and try this one on your own. So I solve for B by dividing any pair. I picked 15 divided by five. That gives me a B value of three. Your A value, once again, comes from your Y intercept. So in this case, A is equal to five, giving us five times three to the X power. We also wanna be able to solve these problems. The solutions for this, um, there is a more algebraic way to do that, but that involves a few pieces called logarithms that we have not learned about yet. So our approach for this is going to be a guess and check method. I need four to the something power gives me something in the four millions. I know that's not gonna be one or two, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with four to the fifth power just to see where that gets me. And when I do that calculation, I'm at 1,024. That's definitely not high enough, so I'm gonna go ahead and take a huge jump and jump up to four to the 10th power. Again, it's a guess and check method. Um, I decided 
1,000 was way smaller than the 4 million that I needed, so I made a big jump up by five. And when I did that, that gave me 1 million, 48,000, 500, and 76. So we did make a big jump, which is good because we increased, we doubled the exponent, so we made a really big jump. I now am going to look, and I know I want to be in the 4 millions, and I'm already in the 1 millions. So my next guess is just going to be adding 1 now instead of adding the bigger values. And when I do 4 to the 11th power in the calculator, I find that it indeed is 4,194,304. So I have reached my conclusion that x is equal to 11. So you need to go ahead and use that guess and check approach in order to filter it out to see what that x value actually equals. Go ahead and try this one on your own. In this case, I started guessing with 4, then I went up to 8, that was too big, so I dropped it back down and I figured out that x is equal to 7. If the things you guessed and checked were different numbers, that's totally fine, but I should, I should see some work as to how you got to your final answer. Sometimes these problems are going to deal with exponents that are more than just a single variable. So in this case, my exponent is 3x plus 2. When this occurs, you need to pay attention to the bases. So the base of this first part is 3, and technically the base of this second part is 6,561 because that's to the first power. In order to actually be able to solve the equation, we need these two bases to match. So 3 to the exponent of 3x plus 2 is going to stay put. I now need to figure out how many 3s are going to give me 6,561. So I'm going to start with 3 to the third power, and that gives me an answer of 27. So I know I definitely need to get bigger than that. So I'm going to go ahead and double that and say 3 to the 6th power, which is going to give me 729. Still not big enough. So I'm going to go ahead and do it by another 3. So 6, 3 to the 9th power, which got me up to 19,683. So I know I have gone past what I actually need. So I'm going to try 3 to the 8th power, which does in fact get me 6,561. So I've changed my base now, 3 to the 8th power, so the two bases, 3 and 3, match. The reason we do that is we can now ignore the bases and pretend they don't exist. So I need 3x plus 2 to equal 8. Since the bases are the same, if the exponents are the same, the answer will be the same. So once the bases match, we can cross those out because they're no longer relevant to our solving. I would finish solving this problem by subtracting 2 on both sides, giving me 3x is equal to 6, and finish by dividing by 3 on both sides, giving me an answer of x is equal to 2. So the key is that you have to get the bases to match, and once the bases match, you can cross it out and just deal with the exponents. Go ahead and try this one on your own. In this case, once again, our base is 3. 3 to the third power is what got me to 27. So then that exponent becomes 3 times the original exponent of x minus 1 is equal to 1. I distribute, add, and divide to get an answer of four thirds. If you said one and one third, that is correct. If you said 1.3 repeated, that is also correct. We want to be able to use these functions now. So a certain bacteria population doubles every 20 minutes, beginning with 10 cells in a culture. The population can be rented, represented, excuse me, by the function b is equal to 10 times 2 to the t power where B is the number of bacteria and T is the time in 20 minute increments. How long will it be after, or how many will there be after two hours? 
So the first key thing is that our time is in 20 minute increments. If I'm talking about two hours, I am talking about 120 minutes, which divided by those 20 minute increments means that I am actually doing this doubling six times. So now all I have to do is take that information and plug it into my problem. So B times two to the sixth power and plugging that into your calculator, you would find that that gives you 640 bacteria in the two hour time span. So we, if we necessary, which in this case it was, figure out the number that we're gonna plug in Plug it in and get the answer with a label. Go ahead and try this one on your own. So in this case, I'm plugging in five because the year since 2000 would be five years according to this problem. And it gives me 206.50 billion liters of soda. The last thing we wanna be able to do is identify exponential functions. In order to do, to do that, we need to be able to look at the outputs, so our Y values. As long as your inputs are consistent, which in both of these cases they are, we know that we can go ahead and start checking the exponential function. So our goal is to figure out how did I get from 64 to 32, and then from 32 to 16, and then from 16 to 8, 8 to 4, and 4 to 2. We want that pattern to hold the entire time. So in order to check that, you can do a couple of things. The first would be to check subtraction. Is 32 minus 64 the same as 16 minus 32? It's not, so subtraction is out. The next thing I would check is 32 divided by 64 is that continue or constant compared to 16 divided by 32, compared to eight divided by 16, compared to four divided by eight and two divided by four. In this case, all of those values, so all of our ratios are going to be 0 0.5, AKA one half. So this is an exponential function because it has a constant ratio it is being multiplied or in this case divided to get from answer to answer. When I come over and look at this next chart, once again, I want to try and find if we've got a common difference or a common ratio. So I'm going to start with 125 minus 100 and 150 minus 125. I see that both of those are consistent and I can continue to check that indeed our common difference is adding 25. So this would be an example of a linear function. So it is not exponential because we are adding or subtracting by the same amount. Go ahead and try this one on your own. Looking at your different pieces, this one is done by subtraction. So that common difference is four meaning that it is a linear function. If you have questions about this or anything else from the lesson, please feel free to reach out and let me know.